Welcome to Sculpture Studios. Here we're creating something from a children's storybook from one of the UK's most successful authors, Michael Morpurgo. Notable works include War Horse, the origin for the famous film and theatre adaptation, The Butterfly Lion, and many, many more. Today we're going to be creating a piece of sculpture commissioned by Jack Arts for the promotion of Boy Giant. Thinking along the lines of the BFG, or more along the lines of Gulliver, or the son of Gulliver, and naturally we're going to be creating something larger than life. The image we've been provided with is a drawing from the book's illustrator Michael Foreman, depicting Omar, a young boy from Afghanistan, who we're going to be bringing into the 3D world. This will be carved from polystyrene, given a render of a thin concrete, and finished to look as though the sculpture is made of sand. We've scaled up the gridded concept image onto our large blocks of polystyrene, and using hot wires, Aidan and Jess have been going to work, blocking out the rough peripheral shape. As well as making sure the perimeter lines are cut correctly, seeing as we're removing quite a lot of material quite quickly, we make sure we retain a complete front and side-on image as best we can, so we always have a profile to refer back to. There we are, finished. Obviously that's a massive joke, and though this may be one artist's form of art, we're going to be refining this just a little bit more. Using the usual nail and wire brushes, Aidan's honing down the shape, with stonemason rifflers being used on the more detailed areas. We're constantly referring back to the concept image, so that we're not deviating too far off track in a direction that our own minds want to take us. It's quite handy to be able to directly overlay the concept image over what we're creating, so we'll do this during the next stages of carving. Don't get ahead of yourself, Aidan. Who knows what will happen? Let's face it, it's all working out. Yeah, just keep an eye on it, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a Oh, don't. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> to give the boy a more modern feel than that of the boy in the illustration, he's been given a hoodie to wear, as opposed to the old cloth shirt and the waistcoat. So here we have Aidan, putting on the finishing touches. What we've done, we've superimposed the client's concept image over what we've created, as everything's just been done from a visual aspect. And we've, uh, we've made what we did blue and what the client's image shows in red. So from this, we could see what amendments we needed to make. Things like the eyes needed to be tweaked slightly, brought them up a tiny bit, made ever so slightly smaller, changing the eyebrows, bringing the ears down a tiny bit so that this ear that was just up there, which was more natural, is now in the more cartoon position. We can send some shots to the client. Once we're happy, that we've got it in a place that we want to show it off in, and uh, and see what the client's feedback is. Once we're happy, the carving is complete, and we've sent photographs and got confirmation from the client. It's time to start working on the finish. To give this a slightly tougher exterior, the first thing we're doing is going over with a spray-on concrete. This will only be a very thin shell, but it'll provide a more sturdy base layer before we start going on top with other materials. From a visual aspect, the colour of the concrete is a nice starting point for the artwork, but we're also going over with an exterior paint as well to sort of seal the concrete before we're going over with the sand and the PVA glue. The concrete layer also helps give the sculpture a bit of weight, and this way it's not so easy to push over, but we're also adding a slightly wider base around the bottom. 
This will give the sculpture a wider footprint, as well as make it look as though the sand is piled up around the bottom. PVA glue is painted on over the entire surface, and we're then going on with a brown kiln sand. Not only does this give the right sort of effect for the colour and the texture that we're after, but we're also thinking about any future repair work if this sculpture is ever damaged. This kiln sand is a relatively uniform material, and it's been chosen for if the client needs to buy any later down the line, it should blend in seamlessly with the original material. This is a boy giant after all, so we've created some minifigures to jump up onto his shoulders. These are all finished in exactly the same way, so the whole sculpture looks as though it could have been created rather masterfully on a beach. With everything nearing completion, it's time to send some final shots to the client before this is transported to location. Wrapping this up would have been rather hard wearing on the sand finish, so we've just made sure the driver was extra careful. This was installed in St Martins in London for the promotion of the book Boy Giant Son of Gulliver. It's always great to see our pieces, not only appreciated by the client and by the general public, but in this case, for Michael Moore Pergo, the author of the book, to actually see the sculpture for the promotion is just the cherry on top. We'd like to thank Natasha and the rest of the team from Jack Arts for coming to us with the work, and we're sure to have a few more projects with these guys later down the line, so stay tuned. Please feel free to leave any comments below, as they're always appreciated, and hit the subscribe button for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook and follow at Aidan Hines on Twitter, and for more of our work, visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching.